Hello and welcome to the Salt Shaker Theory, Three Principles of Effective Management. My name is Guy Clark and I'm a restaurant marketing consultant based in sunny Southwest Florida. But before I get started, I want you to know that I'm not selling anything. I'm not collecting emails. In fact, I won't even mention my Instagram or other social handles because I just want to help you today. I just want you to learn one of the most valuable lessons that I've come across and walk away from this being better than when you walked in. So sit back, listen, and get ready to have an aha moment like I did. So what is this salt shaker theory, you ask? Well, if you're looking for insight into successfully managing a team, you're not going to do much better than famed New York City restaurateur Danny Meyer of Union Square Hospitality Group. His book, Setting the Table, is a must-read for anyone interested in learning more about what he calls enlightened hospitality. I would like to share a now-famed story from that book. Mr. Myers tells the tale of an important learning lesson early in his restaurant career. As told by Danny Meyer. During one of his uncanny, well-timed, impromptu visits to my restaurant, Union Square Cafe, Pat Sita taught me how to manage people. Pat was the owner of a storied New York City steakhouse called Sparks, and by that time he was an old pro at running a fine restaurant. By contrast, I was still in my 20s and unsure of how to lead my business, which was growing fast. Sitting at a table with Pat, I bemoaned the fact that I was failing to get any kind of consistent message across to my staff members regarding standards of excellence. Waiters and managers, at least half of whom were older than I was, were continually testing me, pushing the limits, and it was driving me crazy. If you choose to get upset about this, you're missing the boat, Pat said with reassuring, calm New York accent. And then he gave me a demonstration that has become integral in the way that I view management. He pointed to the table next to us. and First, he said, I want you to take everything off the table except for the salt shaker. Get rid of the plates the silverware, the napkin, even the pepper mill. I want you to leave the salt shaker by itself in the middle of the table. I did as he said, and he asked, where's the salt shaker now? Right where you told me, in the center of the table. Are you sure that's where you want it, he asked. I looked closely, and the shaker was actually about a quarter of an inch off center. Go ahead, put it where you really want it, he said. So I moved it very slightly to what looked to be the smack dab in the center of the table. And as soon as I removed my hand, Pat pushed the salt shaker three inches off center. Now, put it back where you want it, he said. I returned it to dead center. This time he moved the salt shaker six inches off center. Again saying, now, where do you want it? I slid it back to the center and then he explained his point. Listen, Danny. Your staff and your guests are always moving your salt shaker off center. That's their job. It's the job of life. It's the law of entropy. Until you understand that, you're going to get pissed off every time someone moves the salt shaker off center. It's not your job to get upset. You just need to understand that's what they do. Your job is to just move the shaker back each time and let them know exactly what you stand for. Let them know what excellence looks like. And if you're ever willing to let them decide where the center is, then I want you to give them the keys to the store and just give away the freaking restaurant. Wow, now that's an incredible story, wasn't it? So what gets in our way of following this awesome advice? Pretty much everything. In practice, it's hard as hell to keep moving that salt shaker back to center. There's a reason most people and organizations suck at it. First and foremost, there needs to be crystal clear expectations on standards. Oftentimes, the struggle for accountability begins with implicit expectations that haven't been effectively communicated. In other words, most teams don't even know where the salt shaker should be in the first place. But even when those standards are clear, there are three important elements of effectively holding your team accountable. So let's talk about the three principles of effective management now. So going back to Danny Meyer's simplest and yet brutally effective approach to management, it's constant, gentle pressure. So principle number one, constant. Having a culture of accountability requires leaders and managers to demonstrate high levels of discipline, attention to detail, and most of all, consistency. 
You've got to make sure everyone knows where the proverbial salt shaker should be and then emotionally accept your job is moving the salt shaker back again and again and again. This isn't to say that there's not a time and place for escalation and consequences for repeated salt shaker screw-ups. Certainly, there comes a time when you need to face the real possibility someone on your team is incapable of putting that salt shaker back where it needs to go. However, if you're a manager, moving the salt shaker back isn't some annoying distraction that prevents you from doing your work. Moving the salt shaker back is the main function of your job. So let's talk about consistent in practice. If there's one particular tactic in this category that's often missed, it's consistently following up on deadlines. Ideally, your meeting should end with a written out recap. Make sure expectations are written down. Deadlines and accountabilities are clearly marked after every meeting. So there's a written record of where that salt shaker should be. And after that, follow up, follow up, and follow up some more. Every time you fail to follow up, you lose an opportunity to demonstrate your personal commitment to salt shaker placement. And the organization slides a bit closer into a raw and final descent into madness and total anarchy and financial ruin. Okay, that might be a bit dramatic, but you get my point. Principle number two, gentle. Some leaders pride themselves on being taskmasters and aren't afraid to break some eggs to make an omelet. Perhaps you find being gentle too easy on the team. After all, you're their boss. You're not here to make friends. You're here to get work done. Warning, that could be a sign that you might be an a-hole. Furthermore, your team likely hates you. In fact, if you're listening to this, they're plotting yet another way to undermine you and trying to get out of doing more than the least amount of work possible right now. Being gentle as you move the salt shaker back is not about being weak. It just means you're willing to hold people accountable without robbing them of human dignity. You can be candid about their performance without yelling and screaming. So let's talk about gentle in practice. If you're emotionally invested in excellent salt shaker placement, congratulations. You have the makings of a great manager. This passion for placement will serve you well. However, this very same passion may show up as rage when your team cannot seem to consistently get the salt shaker in place. Before you have an accountability conversation, it's important to master yourself first. Remember, almost everyone is actually doing their best they can from where they are. If this is a team member you want to keep around, they generally want to please you and do good work. Start your accountability conversation by agreeing upon a shared purpose. You both want your business to do well, you both want to do great work, and you both want satisfying work relationship. From there, focus on the behaviors and not the meaning that you have ascribed to the behavior. So a good example of that would be, I have noticed you keep putting the salt shaker off to the left. A bad example would be, I've noticed you keep putting the salt shaker off to the left. And that is what clearly tells me that you have no respect for this business, for me as a human, or frankly for yourself, you miserable salt shaker failure. Lastly, be curious. Ask questions to find out if there are other factors that you don't know about. Be open to the fact that you may not have effectively clarified where the optimal salt shaker positioning is. And if you did, you may not have properly trained their salt shaker moving skill set. By all means, hold them accountable. But if you want a good outcome, give them the benefit of the doubt. It's impossible to effectively lead someone you've given up on. So principle number three is pressure. While being gentle is a cornerstone of this management philosophy, that kindness needs to be appropriately balanced with pressure. In direct opposition to that egg-breaking, omelet-making manager I spoke about in the first example, next we have the overly sensitive manager that hates to see someone upset or hurting upon realizing that they've misplaced the salt shaker yet again. While empathy is certainly an important element of being an effective manager, if there's no pressure to balance out the gentle, the organization will lose respect for the standards and they're never enforced. This manager often fails to hold people accountable because of the intense interpersonal discomfort required. 
If they do address issues, there's never an escalation. They're stuck in accountability groundhog day. They have the same conversations over and over and over again, often with unspoken but mounting resentment. Alas, great managers are not only consistent and gentle, but they're willing to apply pressure. They are consistent. They never really surprise and everyone knows the pressure's coming. Because they're gentle, the personal discomfort is minimalized as pressure is applied kindly without ignoring the team's humanity. An effective use of pressure requires thoughtful and appropriate escalations for those repeated salt shaker offenses. So let's talk about pressure in practice. In addition to setting the expectations for salt shaker placement, Everyone on the team should be clear on the consequences for repeated salt shaker mismanagement. Here's where our metaphor gets a little bit surely. If the salt shaker is out of place means that your uniform is untucked, this requires a very different response than what our metaphorical salt shaker out of place refers to stealing money from the cash register. This one's relatively easy to address, and it's obvious how to handle it. It's actually the least egregious misstep that slowly erodes the standards over time. Trust is not lost in most organizations over things like stealing money. It's lost in lots of small violations of expectations. It's lost when otherwise well-meaning team members take small standards breaching shortcuts. This is why being crystal clear on where the salt shaker goes is always the first step. These details matter. From there, it's important that there's clarity on how these missteps get addressed, including a sense for how things are escalated. Maybe it's an informal uh, warning, followed by a written warning, followed by an official write-up, followed by dismissal. Whatever the system, you want to make sure that the escalations protocol is also as clear as ideal salt shaker placement. When that's the case, it's far easier to apply that pressure because everyone knows what's coming. You're not making moral judgments on the fly. You're simply consistently and kindly showing integrity. In other words, you're doing what you said you were going to do, when you said you were going to do it, and how you said you were going to do it. So my thought, my final thoughts on this is management's not for faint of heart. It requires discipline and maintaining standards in a constant manner. It requires painful honesty with yourself when you're slipping to one side or the other of gentle or pressure continuum. And more times than you'll care to admit, you'll discover the issue was you never were clear about the salt shaker placement in the first place. While the changes cannot be underplayed, the benefits of learning how to effectively apply constant gentle pressure are epic. You'll have a team that trusts you are all generally committed to succeeding at a high level. You'll have high achievers that are satisfied with their work is rightfully valued. Your entire team knows the standards that are expected. The work itself will be vastly improved because you can trust that everyone is committed to consistently executing all agreed upon internal and customer facing systems. Ultimately, this leads to a high functioning work environment for your team, a greater and more consistent impact on the people you exist to serve. So in addition, let me confess, I don't pretend to have this totally mastered. You've probably heard me make a few mistakes along this uh, discussion today. Leading people's hard. And to steal a Hemingway quote, we are all apprentices in a craft where no one ever becomes master. But by diligently applying this thought process on how you manage people, you will see drastic improvements in both the work itself and in your work relationships. So thank you for listening to me today. I hope this has a big impact on you as it did on me. My name is Guy Clark. I appreciate your time and wish you nothing but the best.